As part of Project Everything, I was scanning in 1,061 pages of a book. It was just enough time for me to have nothing else I could do during it except for watch video. I decided to watch the new glass-blowing reality show from Netflix. It was fine. You could see the marks where it was going to be a regular network television show. And at the end of the ten episodes, you felt you watched something. But it reminded me that back in my 30s, fresh off the BBS documentary and just starting to work on Get Lamp, I had the idea to do a reality show myself. I got as far as planning it out, figuring out who would be in it, and working out the budget and trying to figure out who I could shop it to. Like many projects, it never made it past the planning stage, but I thought it might be interesting to share my thoughts behind it. The name of the program was Hard Coded, and it was going to be the first programming reality show. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to William Hearn, Daniel Boyd, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. Hard Coded was going to be the first programming reality show. I'd been watching a lot of them at that time, and it's actually to the point that they're starting to fade into history. I really liked this trend where teams of people would be given something creative they had to do in a short period of time. I especially liked the ones that were based around mechanics and car work. At the time, I had a Checker Marathon taxi cab, and all of the work involved in keeping it running fascinated me, along with the people who did that work. There were shows like Monster Garage that had folks facing off to restore two different vehicles in no time, and it had taken off enough that they were importing shows from other countries, like Panic Mechanics, still one of my favorites, that had a real fun attitude about the people who were involved. It was about the cars, but it was also about the people, and depending on how they timed the show, you got to know the personalities of the folks who were working on these machines, as well as the machines themselves. It might seem odd that having come off of a four-year production and going into another three-year production, I might in any way be looking at doing yet something else. But I had really enjoyed turning things into a visual narrative that were normally only abstract ideas on a page, and there was something about setting up a reality show that made it seem the next logical step. Let's just go through the pitch for Hard Coded, and then we'll go into why I ultimately let it go. Hard Coded was a show that would show the art of programming and the competitive aspects of different programming styles towards a relatively easy goal, and then we would have people giving commentary on it and teaching folks about the abstract ideas behind programming as it went. The first thing you need in a reality show is a set that's inspiring. So I thought about a two-tier loft system, each with a set of programmers, a team of about six, some of whom would be artists, some would be straight-up code people, and then others would be doing management or have some other specialized talent we could highlight. The set would look both modern, but also have all sorts of attributes of technology and history on the walls. Really good stuff to have in the background when you're interviewing somebody who's programming. Light it interesting, get good machines, have a real sense of light and darkness moving together. These were programmers, so you wanted caffeine to be around. I could either get endorsements from companies that sold caffeinated drinks or keep it generic and hope that they would sign on. 
Maybe there'd be snacks or specific foods reflecting the different habits of what people would eat when they're working on these problems. There'd be two hosts or narrators, two folks with both a good personality and some awareness of the technical issues behind all of this. The two hosts could be recorded before and after the event to be able to both wrap up ideas and be able to expand on what people are mentioning. There might have been a third person who was on the floor. This was certainly the template in Iron Chef, where you have the host discussing what's going on up in the rafters while somebody down on the floor is talking to each person and each competitor. It would give a sense of action and involvement for all of the work going on there. I had kind of settled on a weekend of shooting. So on Friday night, the teams arrive, they get hotel rooms, and then starting early on Saturday, they get told what their problem is. They start on it, and they go deep into the night. The next day, they have to finish it up. We're towards the end. Things get frantic, and then... They could finish up and polish, and then by the middle of the day, Sunday, it would then be judged. The teams would be told who won, who lost, what points there were, what they did that was well done, what they did that didn't work out, and a winner would be declared. For the pilot episode, what I came up with was Pac-Man. The teams would be told that they would have to make a functioning, working Pac-Man game, and they would be judged on code elegance, the quality of the game, could get Pac-Man champions to come in to give their assessment. I thought we might even be able to get our hands on the original creator of Pac-Man to come in and be one of the judges to talk about what came out the other side. I'd interleave it with a documentary form about Pac-Man so you would know about the history, but we would also have people who were experts in programming being able to be inserted at different moments to explain what we were seeing. So, a three-day production, along with a few interviews done post-production to clean it up, and then a lot of editing to cross-cut all of these different influences and shots to make them into something akin to a sports event. That's the pitch. That was the idea behind Hard Coded. Now, let me talk about why this was entirely doomed. The first reaction might be that it would be very hard to make programming feel competitive and compelling. My response is, that's why I was doing it. If I thought that any other production company in the world could do this, I wouldn't do it. The whole reason I had done the BBS documentary, the whole reason I had done Get Lamp, was because I knew nobody was going to make this film, so it was on me to make it happen. I was reasonably assured that wasn't going to be a problem. Next comes the natural questions about competitiveness and what do you give the teams. I was thinking about having a set of agreed-upon assets or even agreed-upon code that the different teams were working with to have the same nugget of code, maybe even the same nugget of graphics, to be able to have them do the work starting from at least a somewhat similar point. There was a potential there, maybe in other episodes, to insert intentional bugs and seeing how fast the teams could debug them and make them work. The process of problem solving in both these cases, both working with previous code and debugging it, I figured might make interesting television and reaction by the teams. In this rough era of about 2006 and 2007, You already had pretty stiff templates about a reality series. You had a narrator who would tell you what was going on. You had hosts that would walk you through things. And then you would have judging and points where they were being checked on throughout the competition. I was going to follow those same templates because they were already established and it would be easier for production teams to come in and do the work. There was certainly an argument for engineering things so that the Saturday night was an all-nighter and people were working late into the night. There are union and logistical reasons why that may or may not have worked, but it was certainly on the table. 
finally, I thought that by using something as simple as Pac-Man, people would just get it. They would understand that this was a computer program and that it had aspects about it that needed to be fixed, debugged, kept track of. And so that would give them just enough of a grip on all of the concepts as we stepped through them. For the purposes of the pilot, I didn't have to spend a lot of time thinking about all of the logistics involving labor laws and union rules and how you could rent different kinds of equipment, how you would put it all together. A lot of pilots are thrown together, shot, shown to people with real money, and then the rest of the decisions are made partially with the production company you're working with and partially with distributors, networks, and so on. Somebody would be covering the building, somebody would be building that set, somebody would be doing the shooting, and somebody would be doing the editing. But I knew that beyond the pilot, I might not have any control over who those folks were going to be. Having heard this, you are either very excited about the idea of such a show, you are completely skeptical, it is ever going to be something someone could pull off, or you just have no opinion whatsoever because television isn't your thing. Let me at least answer why I decided not to go with this show. Having just come off one production and beginning another, I knew how much work goes on behind the scenes. I had to make a pretty strict decision. Did I want to go into television production? Doing an independent documentary at my own pace with my own money is one thing, but The process of pairing up with people to do the production for a television show is completely different. I probably could have kept the production going in Boston, although it might have been required to go to Rhode Island, Vermont, or New Hampshire based on cost. I knew there would be at least a few thousand dollars involved in putting together the pilot, and I knew that I had to build a trusted set of friends and colleagues to help us put this show together. This is all before the domination of YouTube, where a whole bunch of variables involved in getting your show seen would have gone away to some extent. I certainly wouldn't have had to worry about is anybody ever going to see it, or finding things like webcams that you can buy now for $100 that will do much of the work of a four or $5,000 camera back then. It was going to cost money even to do the pilot. So it was do or die if I went for it. Fundamentally, there was one thing that I came to the conclusion of, which seems completely obvious looking back, but it was a revelation for me. I started looking at all of the reality shows, shows that would demonstrate some passage of time and concerns that you wouldn't get to the end and showing the ups and downs as it was going on, shows involving kitchens and running businesses and working with cars and crafts. And, and as I started to really study how they were put together, to read articles about how they were made, it became obvious to me, every single one of them, Every single one of them was completely fake. Way back in history, there was a controversy involving quiz shows in the 1950s and 1960s where some amount of cheating was going on as producers were building narratives of different contestants who were winning and then winning and then would lose. It was just considered to be part of the process. Sometimes it was honest, but often they could push things in one direction or another, depending on what they thought the audience wanted to see. Eventually, this was found out, a scandal erupted, and laws were passed that make it illegal to do so. Reality shows don't quite have that harness. They're not required to show the passage of time. They're not required to show what one person said versus another. They don't have to explain to you whether reactions are scripted or planned beforehand or if the person is speaking spontaneously. They don't even have to tell you if a person did the thing that it's claiming they did. If you see a person working on a part and the part is repaired, it might be that a worker came in and did the part for them. 
This is often a shock to people who go on these reality shows when they discover exactly how much is controlled and exactly how different it is from what ends up on the screen at the end. Even during this relatively benign glass-blowing competition, various folks were shown on screen talking about their concerns about being portrayed one way or another. Everything about them, image and words and presentation, could all be manipulated in post-production and it would be a completely different character. And I just didn't want to be a party to that. It sounds naive. I really did think that it was possible to show a competition that was an honest, straight-shooting portrayal of an actual team of people using their real skills against another team and then turning it into something compelling. But every indication I had, every time I looked into it deeper, it seemed that that wasn't going to be the case. Even if I thought that I could pull it off, no production company would let me do that. They wouldn't allow it. They'd want to have people involved. They'd assign a director who would make certain choices, who would tell folks to change things around. There are myriad stories of manipulation by the production team to make a competition on a show seem fair, seem unfair, or take away things from contestants to cause drama and conflict and convincing them that one teammate said something about them that the other one has to respond to. I just, I couldn't see myself being a part of that. Ultimately, I bundled up all of the planning all of the drawings, all of the ideas involved with hard-coded, and I just put them away. Who knows where my life would have gone if I had gone into television production like that. Two of my friends were on a reality show called Prototype This for the Discovery Channel. I gave them lots of advice on how to deal with the different companies they had, and they let me tour the set at one point, and a lot of what I thought really was true. Things had to be moved around. Stuff had to be shifted. The choice of editing at the end was often to move away from education and head towards thrill. It was more interesting to have somebody fall or fail than it was for them to succeed and walk away. I was glad of the mental exercise of putting this together. And if there's anything I can tell you, it's that Working out a problem like this, the idea of creating something and all of the different variables, that is a pleasurable thing. There are lots of things you might want to do, and I really encourage you to do the research, to find out what others in that space have done, and just find out about the world a little more. They were all skills I found use for later and in other work. And every once in a while, I do admit, if I let my guard down and I think about it for a few minutes, I do wish that there was one timeline where all of you could have tuned in to watch the next episode of Hard Coded. This is Jason Scott, Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to James Bekoyanu, Mark Pilgrim, Forrest Fuqua, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. I hereby relinquish all rights, all concerns, all licensing to the idea of hard-coded, to the idea of a programming reality show, and any of the concepts I've put here. If you want to use this as the germ for your own programming reality show, please go ahead with my blessing, full support, and my very, very well wishes. Good luck.